Let us pray. Living God, with joy we celebrate the presence of your risen word. Enliven our hearts by your Holy Spirit, so that we may proclaim the good news of eternal and abundant life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture from this morning is Psalm 67. Listen now for the word of the Lord. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us that your way may be known upon the earth, your saving power among all the nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere him. This is the word of the Lord. Our New Testament reading comes from John chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. This is the healing at the pool. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now, there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked, Do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, Get up. Pick up your mat and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and he walked. This is the word of the Lord. A very religious man was once caught in rising floodwaters. He climbed to the roof of his house and trusted God to rescue him. A neighbor came by in a canoe and said, the waters will soon be above your head, above your house. Hop in and we'll paddle to safety. No thanks, replied the religious man. I've prayed to God and I am sure he will save me. A short time later, the police came by in a boat. The waters will soon be above your head. Hop in and we'll take you to safety. No thanks, replied the religious man. I've prayed to God, and I'm sure he will save me. A little time later, a rescue service helicopter hovered overhead, let down a rope ladder, and said, The waters will soon be above your house. Climb up the ladder, and we'll fly you out to safety. No thanks, replied the religious man. I have prayed to God, and I am sure he will save me. All this time, the floodwaters continued to rise until soon they reached above the religious man's house, and he drowned. When he arrived in heaven, he demanded a meeting with God. Ushered into God's throne room, he said, Lord, why am I here in heaven? I prayed for you to save me. I trusted you to save me from the flood. Yes, you did, my child, replied the Lord. 
and I sent you a canoe, a boat, and a helicopter, but you never got in. In our story this morning, Jesus has traveled from the city of Cana to the city of Jerusalem to celebrate one of the religious feasts. Now, to enter Jerusalem, there were several different gates used for a variety of purposes. One of these gates was called the Sheep Gate. This was the entrance through which the sheep were to use, um, that were being used for sacrifice, they would enter through that gate. It's interesting that Jesus, the Lamb of God, who would take away the sins of the world, entered through that same gate. Once Jesus was inside the city, he comes to a pool, and it's called the Pool of Bethesda. The name of this pool is said to derive from the Hebrew and Aramaic language, and Bethesda means either the house of mercy or the house of grace. In both Hebrew and Aramaic, the word Hezda could also mean shame or disgrace. This dual meaning may have been appropriate since the location was seen as a place of disgrace due to the presence of invalids and as a place of grace due to the granting of healing. There, lying around the pool, are a lot of different people with all kinds of illnesses sick, paralyzed, blind, lame. They have come to this spot because it is said that an angel would on occasion come down and stir the waters of the pool and the first one to get into the water would be healed. As Jesus comes to the pool, he moves into the midst of this group of people But notice that he does not heal everyone. He moved among the blind and the lame, and he is drawn to one particular man, a man who had been ill for 38 years. Why in the world, out of all these very needy people, would Jesus choose to heal only one man? It could have been that Jesus knew that this man had been lying there for 38 years, or it could have been for another reason. One thing we do know is that it was not because the man asked for Jesus' help. He didn't even know who Jesus was. Jesus encounters this man and asks him a very simple question. Do you want to get well? This man, paralyzed for 38 years, and Jesus says, Do you want to get well? Imagine the confusion going on in this man's mind. There's three things that I want you to see in this passage this morning. Before you can change, you must decide if you want to be changed. In verse 6, it says, When Jesus saw him lying there, and knew that he already had been in this condition for a long time, he said, do you want to be made well? Now again, this is a simple question, but a strong question. Jesus would often ask questions for the simple purpose of making us think. It's a lot like us parents ask our children, do you want a spanking? Do I need to pull this car over? Do I need to come in there? Uh, no. For the past 38 years, this man had been a beggar, living his life off the donations of others. If he were healed, he would lose those donations. He would lose the pity of others. If this man were healed, he would then have to be responsible for himself. He would have to find work. It would be a whole new world for him. It would be the equivalent of today of offering this to a person who had lived on welfare for almost four decades, asking if they would be willing to give that up in order to be made well. Now there would be risk. Now he would have to be responsible for himself. Number two, if we do want to be changed, we must decide 
to stop making excuses. The sick man answered Jesus by saying, Sir, I have no man to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up, but while I'm coming, another one steps down before me. Notice that the man avoids the question. He doesn't answer it. He doesn't say whether or not he wants to be made well. He just complains. He tells us how unfortunate he is, gives us a long list of his troubles. Has it ever occurred to you that there are some people who just really enjoy complaining? We can't help but feel sorry for the man. All alone, his family is gone, he's lame, he's lonely. He says, sir, I have no one to help me. In other words, I can't do anything for myself and God's not going to do anything for me either. If we want to change, we must decide that we will stop making excuses. Third, we must decide whether we are ready to take action. Now understand when this man was healed, he was not healed by the water. Jesus simply said to him, get up. Pick up your mat and walk. Obviously, this man now had a choice. He could hear what Jesus said and ignore it, or he could listen and wish something would happen, or he could listen and obey. Trust and obey. It's a choice all of us have. I have that choice and you have that choice. Do you want Jesus to heal the parts of your life where you've been hurt? Or is it easier to hold on to the hurt? When Jesus said, take up your mat, he's telling the man all and all of us something very important. If you truly want to change, then don't make any provision of going back. Burn your bridges. Roll up your mat. No more excuses. Cut off any possibility of going back. According to verse 14, later Jesus found the man in the temple and said to him, See, you've been made well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. If you want to get well, if you want things to get better in your life, then you have to make an effort. This man is a lot like us and we are a lot like him. He made some mistakes. There are no doubt that there was sin in his life, just as there is in each of ours. I don't believe that Jesus was saying that the sin was the cause of the illness in his life, but I do believe that Jesus was warning him of the results of sin in our lives are always worse than the result of any physical illness. In John chapter 9, there is a man who was born blind. Jesus heals him, but before he does, the disciples ask, Jesus, who sinned, this man or his parents, to cause him to be blind? Jesus replies, neither, neither the man nor his parents sinned, but this happened so that the work of God could be displayed in his life. From this story, we can see that in today's story, sin was not the cause of the lame man's illness. This man wasn't perfect in his life, but I don't see sin being the cause of his illness. This man no doubt did many things wrong, but there are some things that he did right. Once Jesus asked him the question, do you want to be healed? He made several life decisions right then. First, he identified the change that he wanted. There are some people who, if given the opportunity for healing or for change, will actually choose to remain sick. The first step to gaining something is to want it. We must determine what we really want, and then we must say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
Second, he quit blaming others and making excuses for his problem. He was complaining. Every time the water bubbles up, no one is here to help me into the pool. So it's their fault. The stronger ones always get into the water first. Have you asked for help? The one who needs the help can't get it. And it's been that way for 38 years. We humans have been blaming others for our problems since the beginning of time. When God asked Adam in the garden why he disobeyed him by eating from the tree, Adam said, The woman you gave me, she persuaded me to eat. When Moses asked his brother Aaron why he let the Israelites worship a golden calf, Aaron said, Well, you were gone, and the people made me. I really didn't do anything. I just threw their jewelry into the fire, and poof! Out came a golden calf. So blame them. Blame the fire. The fire did it. But don't blame me. Believe it or not, my students even do it when they say, I would do better in school, but my teacher doesn't like me. They gave me this bad grade. I would go further in life, but you don't understand how I was raised. We have a hard time saying these words. I was wrong. I'm actually the one responsible. I'll stop blaming others. Third, Jesus motivated the lame man to stretch himself. Jesus often told people that in order to be healed, they must do something. He said to the man with the withered hand, stretch out your hand. And when he did, he was healed. Jesus put dirt on the eyes of a blind man and said, Now go and wash in the pool of Siloam. And when he did, suddenly he could see. Jesus said to this man, Pick up your mat and walk. We have to stretch ourselves. We have to do something. Sometimes it may be uncomfortable or hard. But we must trust and obey. Fourth, he gave credit where credit was due. He gave credit to Jesus for healing him. In verse 13, Jesus came back to reveal himself to this man. Jesus wanted him to have more than just a healthy body. He also was concerned about his spiritual health. Verse 14 says, Later Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. Notice the man was well again. Apparently there had been a time when he could walk. And Jesus didn't want him to fall into this condition again. But furthermore, he didn't want the man to experience an eternity without God. Through this man, Jesus could show God's mercy to the unexpected. Healing this man, even on the Sabbath, was more important to God than resting. God is always at work in our lives. We don't worship a day. We worship the Lord. The Lord over the Sabbath. This man didn't choose Jesus. Jesus chose him. He had a choice to listen to Jesus, to trust and obey. In the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, do you want to be healed? If so, get up, take up your mat, and walk. Amen.
Please join me as we affirm our faith by saying the Apostles' Creed. Brothers and sisters, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Draw near to the Lord who is good, whose steadfast love endures forever. Let us pray to the Lord, our Savior, God of our salvation. Answer us with grace. We give you thanks and praise, O God, that you have become our salvation. By your grace we will not perish, but have full and everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. At this time, the ushers will wait on us for our morning offering. Spirit, strengthen our souls to be brave and bold in Christ's service. Take our offerings and use them for your purpose. In the name of Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Lord. Amen. Now please join me in one voice as we pray the prayer our Lord taught us to pray by praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Thank you.